Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, TechnoTalks here. So today I'm back with another video, and this time I'm gonna be talking about One UI 3.0. So I finally received One UI 3 on my Samsung Galaxy S20 FE, and I'm just gonna go ahead and check it out for the first time with y'all. So I got it, I received it yesterday on January 21st, and I haven't really checked it out yet, so this is gonna be my first impressions, plus we're gonna be talking about some of the new features and kind of comparing it to One UI 2.5, which I have on my S10 Plus right here. So let's go ahead and begin. Let me go ahead and show you the update screen that I had received from this. Uh, so here it is, if you're able to see it. So this is a screenshot of what I got, visual design improvement, improved performance, better customization, enhanced features. So there's just tons of different things. And then let me go ahead and show you the size right here, which is pretty large. It's around two gigabytes, 2,063 megabytes, which is around three gigs. So it's a pretty large file and it is what should be expected from this. So now let's go ahead and kind of start comparing these two. So first up, I'd like to begin with the lock screen for both of these devices. As you can see, we do have a slight difference in both of these devices. So one of them, the battery is displayed up here on One UI 2.5, and the clock is just lower down in the middle. And then on the S20 FE, we can see that the battery percentage is down here. So another difference is gonna be the fingerprint sensor. If you have noticed, the fingerprint sensor on both of these look slight differently. So on One UI 3.0, they did change it. And it kind of looks better in my opinion. They're not too big of a difference, but it's just a little visual difference, which kind of looks nicer in my opinion. So now let's go ahead and turn both of these on real quick and let's check out something else. So there's something which is really cool on this. When you click the clock, let me go ahead and click it. When you click the clock, you're able to see some widgets right here and you're able to add some more, but on here, it just displays the clock. So you're not able to see those widgets, which is kind of an, not annoying, but this is just way better in my opinion that you're able to see your widgets from right here, like my digital well-being, my screen on time and whatnot. And then I could add an alarm and then I could have YouTube music playing and I have my weather up there and you still get to see your clock. So that's a pretty nice design change right there, which I really like and I feel like it's pretty good. So another difference is going to be the way that the font looks on both of these. So the font is a little different on here and it's a little bolder right here, but I do prefer the new font. So now let's go ahead and go to the lock screen area. So this is way different on both of these. As you can see on One UI 3.0, this kind of looks like iOS. Don't you think? I feel like it looks like an iPhone lock screen and I feel like this right here just looks better. It gives you a better representation of where to click on this and whatnot rather than this right here which doesn't and I feel like they've really upgraded a lot of things on these. So now let's go ahead and get inside both of these phones. Okay, so another difference that I did notice was the widgets panel. Not the widgets panel but the control center. So if you slide down on both of them, you can see that this takes up the whole screen and it's a little blurred out. It like blurs out the background and it just has like this different design right here. But on the other hand right here, this does not take up the whole screen and it doesn't blur out the background. It just takes up this top portion, which isn't bad, honestly. It was still usable, but this right here, Samsung just implemented something new, which is honestly way better in my opinion. And then let's go ahead and slide down on both of these. We can see that it's still blurred right here. It just blurs the background and then the clock is centered and we have some of the buttons down here like media and whatnot rather than down here all the way down here. It just looks a little better right here overall. But the only thing that I did not like a lot was that they moved up the search, the power and then the settings up all the way up there compared to it being down here. So that's the only difference that I really did enjoy. Now, another thing I'd like to talk about is going to be how you lock your phone. So normally you'd go ahead and click your power button on both these devices and turn it off. But finally, Samsung has implemented something that I've really liked on a OnePlus device, especially is double tapping to lock the screen. So right here on 2.5, you can see that it does nothing. I can double tap the screen. You can double tap to wake on One UI 2.5, but you can never lock your screen, which was not annoying, but it was something that would be really nice if we had it and we finally got it. So let me go ahead and that up sorry about that uh it's just overall a pretty nice feature that you're able to double tap and just shut off your phone so another thing that i'd like to talk about is the settings the design change in settings so let's go ahead and go to settings on both of these 
and scroll down a little and as you can see they have changed some of the icons so we have a little more squared icon theme right here and a little more colorful well not colorful but it just shows its color a lot more the icons are inside these little boxes rather than just having the icons out in the open like this as you can see it's a little different over here it was still nice but definitely samsung has had some upgrades and they made basically a lot of things better in my opinion so we did get another thing it's going to be the call screen so let me go ahead and go to the phone dial on both of these one second okay so let's go ahead and go to settings on both of these right here go to settings and settings on the phone app and there is a new thing call background so what this does is it enables it enables you to have like a background when someone calls you and it just changes up the screen you can like have a little video playing in the background for certain people you can change the layout of the screen as you can see right here and then you could add backgrounds from your own photos which is pretty nice which was not available on one ui 2.5 and this is just another cool upgrade that samsung has brought to its devices so overall samsung has been doing a lot of upgrades they might not be really major upgrades but they're still really nice. So the final thing that I did find uh, real quick in my first impressions would be the volume rocker. So let's go ahead and use the volume rocker on One UI 2.5. You can see we have like this animation that just pops up on the top. It doesn't extrude too much of the screen and it's just a normal volume slider. But then on One UI 2.5, let's go ahead and show you that. You can see that they have changed it up. So on 2.5, now the volume rocker is this little weird thing that pops up next to your volume rocker, which is actually really nice. And you're basically able to see your volume from there and then co control it real easily. You can control it on One UI 2.5 as well, but this just looks a little better. And then you can access your other volume settings by just clicking those three dots right there and having all these settings. So one final thing that I'd like to talk about before I end this and I'm done and give you guys my first impressions is going to be the fact that we finally got live captions on One UI on a Samsung device. So what live captions are is this right here. So when I go ahead and click this live caption detects speech on your device and automatically generates captions. So this has been on Google devices for a while now. And if y'all watched my pixel uh, reviews, you might have seen it if I was talking about it on there. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. But if I didn't, what this basically enables is you could go on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and be watching a video, or even YouTube, and then this would generate captions for you, which overall is a pretty nice feature for some people that might have issues with hearing, and not every application supports live captions. So this just gives you captions for basically anything that you're watching with sound, and it will basically generate these captions for you the best way it can. Sometimes it does mess up if the person's speaking real fast or if it's not the best Like it's a little messed up and you can't really tell what they're saying it might mess up as well But overall it works pretty fine And if Google did implement it the same way they did on their own pixel devices, then this is perfectly good and it is very usable so That's about it for this video. Uh, the only reason that you might be thinking actually that there are a lot more features, why aren't you talking about those? So this is basically my first impressions about One UI 3.0 and I won't be going into depth in this video, I'm just gonna be talking about the things that I saw right off the top of my head and then I'm just gonna be going over those in this video. But I will be posting a video soon that will go in depth with all the new feature changes, like around 20 or so, and I will be talking about every single one of them and just giving you guys the new features and telling y'all what they are so you don't have to go ahead and find them which will make it easier so first impressions about one ui 3.0 definitely a very big upgrade and i'd say i really enjoy it a lot it's overall just made the design and the screen look a little better and it's made everything a lot smoother so quick before i leave off this video let me go ahead and show you something so when you go into games on both of these devices, let's say Dead Trigger 2, right? Let me go ahead and turn down the volume. If you have noticed in my speed test videos, whenever I close off apps, like right here, I'm going to go ahead and close the app. It goes into landscape first, and then it has to switch over to portrait, which has been an issue with Samsung devices for a really long time now. Whenever I did speed test, it would just annoy me a lot, and it would overall just make the experience a little worse. But now, 
on One UI 3.0, they have finally fixed it and it goes to portrait mode right away, as you can see right there. Uh, I do have live captions turned on still, so that's the reason that did pop up. But now, whenever you close out of an app that's in landscape, it will directly go to portrait and it won't give you that weird animation that you had before. So, as I said, they made everything a lot cleaner, a lot smoother from what I've seen for around a day now and I really enjoy it and I definitely recommend people updating their devices which I don't think a lot of people won't do but if you're someone that doesn't like to like look at new updates or don't want to upgrade during the first like month or so for bugs or whatnot so far I haven't had any issues and I definitely recommend it if your device can get one UI 3.0 go ahead and upgrade and you will really enjoy the experience so that's about it for this video if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one